Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. So far on this channel we have already looked back at the full history of various characters from the Street Fighter universe. In today's episode we are going to go back through time and analyse the life and times of Guile, a fighter who at one point in history seemed to be positioned as the face of the entire Street Fighter franchise. In this special video we are going to explore this American marketing push and compare it with Guile's position within the actual Street Fighter games canon. Is Guile anywhere close to being as important to Street Fighter as the likes of Hollywood and Hasbro would have us believe in the early to mid 90s? Let's find out. This ladies and gentlemen is the true story of Guile, the all American, American. Yeah. Like many others, I grew up amongst the largest swath of Street Fighter fans, those who discovered the series through the release of the game Street Fighter 2. A key element that stood out about this game to me was of course the memorable characters, and the fact that we could choose from 8 of them rather than 1 like in many previous games, and shortly after this, this number obviously quickly increased to 12. What I will say is that each of these fighters felt so important to me at the time, that it did not really feel like this game had a main character, as on the whole, they all seemed equally cool. This opinion surrounding the game would only last a couple of years though, as multiple other media sources indicated that I was very wrong indeed. The first of these I recall seeing was the live action movie that saw a 1995 release in the United Kingdom. This version of Street Fighter prominently positioned Jean-Claude Van Damme playing Guile as the star of the movie, with the film's story being anchored around his character. The feature length depicts Colonel Guile on a mission to bring down General M. Bison, the military dictator and drug kingpin of Shadow City, who aspires to conquer the world with an army of genetic super soldiers. Along the way, he even enlists the aid of street fighters, such as Ryu and Ken, playing second and third fiddle, further illustrating that Guile is the top dog in Street Fighter's universe. Not long past this point I would also see a Street Fighter cartoon, with this media also portraying Guile as by far the most important character in the show. In this one, Colonel William F. Guile is the leader of a group creatively known as the Street Fighters, an international undercover peacekeeping force composed of martial artists from around the world. They follow a code of honour involving the key words discipline, justice and commitment. The programming essentially tells the tale of Guile leading his force against that of M. Bison's. In fact, when I was a child as seen in this picture, I used to own a Street Fighter 2 t-shirt, and come to think of it, the clothing featured used, you guessed it, Guile on the front of it rather than any other character. People in high places seem to adore this man over all our other favourites. In the United States, it appears that Hasbro would get a massive boner for Guile too who would end up making a Street Fighter 2 G.I. Joe range of toys around him, with the character even seeing a ridiculous Guile Sonic Boom Tank manufactured for him. Guile certainly seemed the character that many parties were banking on to make them money. But what for Guile in the Street Fighter 2 game? The incarnation we would first stumble across in any form. Let's explore. From the earliest notes and concept art for the character, it all suggests that the fighter was engineered specifically by Capcom to appeal to the American market. The character has many striking features that further back this up, from his blonde hair, blue eyes, chiseled jawline and permanently displeased expression. Pair all this with his military apparel, the character just reeks of G.I. Joe before he even had any official connection to the property. Capcom knew what they were doing here. In regards to Guile's design origins, producer Noritaka Fanamizu would expand on what we know further by adding that his appearance was partly modelled after Jean-Pierre Polnareff from the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure manga, which is obviously the inspiration behind Guile's iconic hairdo. In combat, Guile shouting as he throws Sonic Boom is etched into the minds of Street Fighter fans around the world forever. But obviously there are more layers to this man's fighting style than simply this well-known trademark manoeuvre. Guile fights with a rather strong offence and defence, which combined with his reliable agility and air grabs makes him a formidable foe indeed. Guile is also a master of patiently anticipating his opponent's next moves, which makes a lot of sense considering he's a military background. 
When the time is right, Guile will take advantage of his special moves such as the Sonic Boom or Flash Kick to obliterate opponents. In his video game debut of Street Fighter 2, Guile enters the World Warrior Tournament eager to take revenge on M. Bison, a man he holds responsible for the death of his best friend Charlie Nash. The two men had become friends when Guile was a trainee in the United States Air Force, with Charlie serving as superior officer who taught him his unique form of fighting to begin with. M. Bison would be arrested for Charlie's demise, but in the court case following the events, he would be acquitted of any crimes due to bribing the judges, allowing him to walk free. By hosting the Second World Warrior Tournament, Bison could seek revenge against all those who hindered his syndicate. Guile would take the bait and leave his family behind to pursue Bison at this very event. If you win the tournament, plan as Guile, he gets Bison by the scruff of the neck reminding him that he remembers what he did to Charlie back in Cambodia. At this point M. Bison goes full on Sith Lord and tries to provoke Guile into killing him. However Guile's wife turns up on the scene and reminds him that by killing M. Bison he will be a murderer no better than the dictator himself. So his playthroughs end with him showing Bison mercy and returning home with his family coming to the realisation that revenge won't bring Charlie back. To coincide with the release of a live action movie, we obviously had the movie video games that once again featured Guile. But what for Japanese animated media? Did the American hero take centre stage again in these stories? Well, in the Street Fighter 2 anime movie, Captain Guile, just like in the game, is depicted out for revenge against M. Bison for the death of Charlie. At first though, he has no interest in pursuing such a goal, but eventually relents when Chun-Li later tells him that Bison killed her father years ago too. In this Japanese produced movie, he takes a huge back seat in comparison to American tellings of the story, and instead ends up having his plans foiled by M. Bison. Ryu instead is given the centre stage as the movie's main hero. Guile is eventually saved by another Japanese born fighter in the film, E. Honda. In the Street Fighter Japanese animated TV series known as Street Fighter 2V, once again Guy would appear, but unlike in American content, he would take a back seat to characters that were deemed more important, namely Ryu, Ken and Chun-Li. In this one, Guy will acts as a sort of rival to the show's main characters, kicking both Ryu and Ken's ass. To make matters worse for the martial artists, Guy admits he was able to do it with a severe hangover with the incident humbling the two fighters and convincing them they needed to go on a training journey to become better. In fact, while not the star of the show, Guile's role is fairly important I guess, as the show's two main stars resolution is met later on when they both manage to earn the military man's respect. The next key chapter in Street Fighter history would occur in the video game world with the release of Street Fighter Alpha, which acted as a prequel story to Street Fighter 2. What came as a surprise to many, despite Guile's insane push in the West to be the star of Street Fighter, Guile would not be in Alpha at all, and instead would be replaced with Charlie, the man he was looking to avenge in the Second World Warrior Tournament. Many speculate that Guile was not included due to the fact that Charlie and Guile had too many similarities. While missing out on both the first two Alpha games, Guile would show up in Street Fighter EX, the Eureka developed non-canon polygonal fighting game. While non-canon, it is said that the EX games occur after Alpha but before Street Fighter 2, so Guile is still searching for M. Bison to avenge Charlie's death. Guile is a playable character in all three EX games, and in the tag team fighting game EX3, he tags with Interpol member Chun-Li, as they both seek revenge and to take down Bison for good. Guile would finally show up in the Alpha series as of Street Fighter Alpha 3, but not until the home version of the game. In this one, he is sent to look for Charlie by the United States Air Force after he went missing in a secret investigation. On this mission, he meets Chun-Li for the first time, who warns him not to follow Charlie due to the danger being involved. However, he assures her he will be safe due to his strong fighting abilities. He eventually tracks down Charlie at the Shadaloo base and tells him he needs to get out due to an aerial bombardment taking place in just one hour. Charlie, however, warns Guile that M. Bison will escape if they leave now, and the two military men end up coming to blows due to this disagreement. Eventually, M. Bison appears and attacks them, but he is no match for their combined might. This leads to him retreating and calling a gunship to keep them pinned down and cover his escape. The two give chase to try and stop him for good, and end up setting up explosives in his base around his psycho drive to stop him regenerating his powers. 
After Ryu defeats him, Bison, he tries to regenerate in the Psycho Drive. Charlie convinces Guile to escape while he holds off Bison, and Guile escapes right before the base explodes. With Charlie and Bison presumably caught in the blast, Chun-Li and Ryu eventually find Guile standing on the mountain, and Chun-Li says that Charlie may perhaps be alive somewhere, just as she believes that her father may be too. Guile agrees and says that he will continue to believe in Charlie, with past this point obviously leading into Street Fighter 2. Guile's next canon appearance would occur in Street Fighter 4, which is set after the events of Street Fighter 2. Here, Guile remembers that Charlie may still, in fact, be alive, as his body was never actually recovered in Alpha 3. He demands from his superiors to conduct a new search for him. This, unfortunately for Guile, is not granted, but instead his superiors send him to investigate Sin, an organisation with alleged ties to Shadaloo. At first, Guile is sceptical that Shadaloo exists without Bison's leadership, but once again teams up with Chun-Li to investigate things. The two end up entering the Sin fighting tournament, with the goal of entering their headquarters. Here he meets a French fighter named Abel, who is familiar with Guile's sonic boom technique, leading him to believe Abel knows more of Charlie's whereabouts. The two end up coming to blows with Abel not wanting to give up any sensitive information, but Abel is later seen with Chun-Li and Guile heading to the Sim base together. At the base, Guile manages to uncover further important data, but Chun-Li is captured by Vega, so he sets off to save her. Here he is ambushed by Sin leader Seth, However, Abel arrives and faces off against him instead, allowing Guile to pursue Chun-Li. Other stuff ends up unfolding and Jen is actually the one who manages to save her from an exploding Sim base. After these events, Guile returns to Charlie's grave, placing a beer bottle on it as a way of buying his old friend a last drink. He tells the grave that although Sin's plans have been foiled, he knows that he hasn't seen the last of Shadaloo just yet. Following the events of Street Fighter 4, in Street Fighter 5, Guy was sent to investigate the Black Moon, which had been detonated over New York, causing loss of signal and blackouts. Intelligence suggests Shadaloo are up to no good once more, leading to Guy and Chun-Li teaming up once again. They eventually discover all four Shadaloo executives in New York, including M. Bison, where Chun-Li is knocked down by the dictator himself, with Kami needing to make the save. Guy, Kami and Chun-Li manage to escape though, Later, Kami fills Chun-Li and Guile in on Bison's evil plot, explaining that keys are needed to unlock the Black Moon weapon's power. Kami even presents Chun-Li with one of the keys. Here, Charlie shows up out of nowhere, who has been resurrected from the dead, who fights Guile to get the key. Guile finds it tough to believe that this is really him, due to his unnatural appearance and cold gaze. The two end up fighting with Charlie managing to overpower Guile, even absorbing his sonic booms in the process, eventually managing to take Guile's key. We will talk more about what happened to Charlie in his own story in a future episode. But later in the story, Charlie's conscience and karma side reawakens, which reminds him of his friends, eventually reunited with Guile after others had manipulated him for so long. Together, the pair in subdue Abel, who is under the influence of psycho power. Charlie even uses his absorption power to remove Abel's psycho power. Before leaving the scene, Guile gives Charlie his dog tag back, the one he had been holding on since his initial death. During the final assault against Shadaloo, both Chun-Li and Guile are confronted by Bison. Charlie appears once more and fights him off. In this fight, Charlie sacrifices himself in an attempt to kill Bison, as Guile helplessly watches. Sadly, with Bison's power being at an all-time high, Charlie's kamikaze is completely fruitless, making the situation all the more tragic. Like in much of the other source material, Ryu is the one to defeat M. Bison with Guile managing to escape the explosion with both him and Chun-Li. This time though, M. Bison finally seems to be defeated. The good. Well, for now at least. Away from the main series of games, Guile would appear in a number of crossover titles, the first of these being X-Men vs Street Fighter. The game contains Charlie as a playable character with Guile appearing in Charlie's ending, obscured by shadows. As a playable fighter though, he would first show up in Marvel vs Capcom 2, New Age of Heroes, the ridiculous six-man tag team game chock full of chaotic action. He is Capcom vs SNK, video game appearances would be much more prolific, appearing in every single crossover game between the big brands. SVC Chaos reveals that Guile has gathered significant intelligence by working for the US military, giving him extensive knowledge of Geese Howard's intricate Southtown criminal empire. 
seeing him as a similar threat to that of M. Bison. He would also service in Capcom Fight and Evolution, the poor title that was pretty much Capcom vs Capcom. But I have little more to add in that regard. Guile would also team up with Abel in Street Fighter Cross Tekken, due to be in order to secure Pandora's box. In this game they battle new rivals Hihachi and Kuma. Guile's ending after the credits show he becomes world famous and he appears to enjoy it all. Guile is also playable in Power Rangers Legacy Wars due to Rita Repulsa's hold on the morphing grid that stretches across multiverses. Guile is among the warriors who are sucked into this grid. In Super Smash Bros Ultimate, Guile functions as an assist trophy who, when summoned, will crouch and block enemies' projectiles. He can also perform his patented maneuvers such as the Flash Kick and Sonic Boom. That just about rounds up Guile's history within the world of video games and other media sources. But I think it is pretty clear to see from all of this, as utilised as Guile was in American produced content in the early to mid 90s, he took somewhat of a back seat to Ryu as the star of the Street Fighter franchise in pretty much all future material. It is certainly interesting to look back at this character's roots and see how his significance seems to have changed over the years. He went from the franchise's most marketed character in some regions, to ending up taking somewhat of a secondary role universally down the line. I guess looking like a G.I. Joe action figure is likely only going to carry a character so far when trying to build a worldwide brand. But in America in particular, Guile certainly helped Street Fighter establish its presence. While Guile is no longer top dog in 2021, it is also impossible to deny, due to the heavy marketing and strong character design, just how recognisable Guile actually is. And for this reason, he will probably always be one of the characters many people think of when someone mentions Street Fighter in the first place. So ladies and gentlemen, that was the true story of Guile, the all-American, American. The Hasbro hero himself. Let me know in the comment section what you thought of today's video and why you think that Guile may have stopped being pushed as the face of Street Fighter. I would be curious to hear your theories regarding this. If you enjoyed this video, I have tons of gaming history content for you to enjoy, including many other Street Fighter biopics covering this game's classic roster. Further to this, if you have already seen everything I've uploaded recently, my wife, Lady Decade, has uploaded a 30 minute documentary on the Nintendo 64 disk drive. So why not check that one out if you want something a bit different. This channel is partially possible due to the generous backing I receive through Patreon. If you too would like to support my work and see your name added to the credits, please consider backing the channel too. Even $1 a month helps me do what I do. So special thank yous go out to Sebastian Velez, A Murder of Crows, Carl Johnson, Heo Paulo Lopez, Nostalgia Collector, Ben Haradine, Corey I. Marsh Sr., Capcom vs SNK, BXL Gotham, Rowan Dinched, Evan Balder, Philip Manth, Azura Kai, Keith Ferguson, Jocelyn Varela, Michael Cullix, Ago, Jordan Duran, Angel Light 85, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Quince Azana, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of the Dead, Gary Pinkett, ECU, Professor, Kid Anime, Justin Wang, Aaron McNamara, Hermes Gonzalez, Instant Gratification Monkey, Man Shovel, James Bishop, JB, Michael Hall, Wesley Sang, He, Fellatio, Langston Miller, New, Brian Barry, Sarah Powell, Flaming Renee, Marvin O'Leary, Chris Cool, TOG Driver, Adrian Hannington, Bernard NG, Richard Stu Stewart, Dan Van Dammit, Louis Vian, John Bates, David Bauer, Chris Fisk, Mike Bruno, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Retroverse.com, Casey Wright, Since Spaces at Zai, Andrew Bazanski, Alex Summers, Gunther Hendricks, and everybody else who backs me on the Patreon platform. Thank you very much. Cheerio.